from Model Horse Tax School. My name is Carrie, and today we're gonna do this web girth for the pack saddle. I found this picture. Um, I knew they used a web girth. Now that I have a picture, I know what we're making. Um, 15 strands, 10 strands. So I would need four uh, of these uh, cinch rings with tongues that are soldered so they're closed. This is an eight millimeter jump ring. I turned into a D, and then this is a three thirty second inch um, D. I am a probably there's keepers, so I'm going to need something for that. That's what these are. These are keepers, like leather keepers, and this is going to be like I have a string girth video, regular string girth. Uh, measure the length using a string or something measure the girth and then when you have the string then you can reduce by uh, the size of the jump whatever the jump ring is and that on both sides and then that will give you the length of the hook all right now we need to put on our rubber bands for tension this way that's the way to do it and then I can tuck the tongue right into that loop right there to keep it out of the way like that and then over here there's a nice little nail on there and that's where we put the first one and then hook this in and on this other side there's another one and then what I like to do because you can with this which is why I like this setup is I can go ahead and tighten it and I want to tighten it on both sides or I could use shorter rubber bands, but. And then help it lay flat. There we go. All right, now I need my 15 strands. Um, this is bedspread weight cotton, so I'm gonna use the same thing I used uh, in that other video. It's bedspread weight cotton. Um, it's for crocheting things like doilies. I don't know. <laughs> I love that word. Doily. Doily. Um, so we're going to use a tapestry needle or a plastic canvas needle. Um, something that's not sharp. That way we don't bleed on our project. Uh, the length of this thread I'm using here is probably about four to six feet. Um, it was way more than I needed for this project. At least for this first part here. Okay, we're going to go down through the ring, down through the ring, over the top of the thread, through the loop from underneath, and then through the loop created. This is a latigo tie, and I'm going slowly right now because you need to get this down, and this is the main knot you need to know for this technique, is just latigo ties, and starting it is the hardest. Okay, now that's an eight inch tail. We're gonna get that out of the way. We're gonna go to the other side. And um, wanna make sure that the tongue is on the other side of the hook. That just helps quite a bit. Okay, now we're gonna go down toward, and then towards yourself, over the thread you created, up through the ring, and then through the loop, which is in my hand there, but it's the loop created. And then we're gonna go ahead and pull this so that they're all have the same tension. Now I put the, um, yeah, I'm using the needle there to pull it tight. So pull on the needle in the loop created to create the tension. Okay, down, but now you have to go between that, um, first string okay so you're between those strings and then over the thread you just put in there down go up through the loop 
the uh, jump ring. And then that tongue got in the way. That's why it's cool to get it like uh, the rubber band that just hold it out of the way there. Okay. And then through the loop created. So right now I'm getting that loop open, pulling the thread through. And this particular cotton, I used a different roll that I inherited from my grandma. It was all tangly. Normally it's not like this. It's friction free and it uh, works really well. You can use pearl if you prefer. All right, we're just going to go ahead and do this for about half the number of times. So we said 15. So I'm going to go maybe six on this side. And then once we got the six on this side, you'll want to, um, well, this is about the time you take the hook off. All right. You only need enough tension. The string has to have enough tension that it won't undo when you take the hook off. So let's see. There's the hook off. All right count my threads. I want to do seven and then the other side will do six and that'll give me my 15. Um, also, when you get to seven, the other side is the other side of the tongue. Um, I put this uh, on a uh, piece of cloth to try and keep it from moving around so much. All right, I'm going to count my threads. One more on this side. And then I will start working on the opposite side of the buckle tongue or the jump ring tongue or the centering tongue, whatever that is. And again, we're, we're making sure we got the tension the same on all of these. Now this particular one, I always make two, so two videos, and then I take the one stuff I like the best. And in this case here, I was doing jump rings instead of D rings. Having done both of them, I will tell you, I prefer jump rings to D rings just easier to get tension with the jump rings than the bees. Okay, here is a finishing stitch on the edges, just using the tail end um, of the uh, thread. And basically it's up through a thread and then the needle goes through the, um, through the loop. So pick up a thread and where you place uh, your tail is uh, matters. So yeah, I'm pushing it over to the side. And then that way I, it's going to pick it up in a loop. So I want to do three rows of that. And uh, so I'm flipping the loom around. It just makes it easier for me to get three rows because I need a place to put those keepers. So two to three rows, depending upon how thick the leather is. I think I'm going to use a 332nd. Uh, I, I have some leather lace that just needs to be scarved and I'll probably use that. Um, make sure you keep your threads flat. So this is where you um, define their position in the uh, cinch. So you want to make sure they, the, whatever's on the left side goes straight to the one on the right side. If any of them have crossed, you can use this stitch to force them in a permanent position so that you can't tell. So you work the cross in through these three rows of knots. Let's see, and that's where I was, you know, noticing, okay, that one's wrong. So um, just reworking it to make sure that I got as flat as possible and then to work it so they stay that way. So I don't have any twists or crossovers. Okay, I'm not going to show it here, but you're going to do this on both sides. So this a stitch here. Um, now I said three on this one on the other video uh, for just a standard cinch. I only did one. Uh, this one here, because of the, um, the holders, the keepers, we're going to do the three. But if you don't want to do the keepers, then just do one. Um, and then I would recommend doing the, the side uh, color pieces like I did there. All right, you're doing that on both sides, and then we're moving on to the center of the cinch. And in this case here, I cut the center of a, it's one quarter inch, down to a 332nd, just eyeballed it, um, glue that tab down. So now I've got my small D in the front. 
and making sure I have a D. Okay, so I'll put that in the back. And then I would put that wherever the center is. Now you can use uh, a ruler and measure the center or you can eyeball it. And if you're good at eyeballing, then you can do that. Otherwise, I would go ahead and um, get, uh, get out a ruler and mark your center. Um, I am gluing this a little bit so that it doesn't wander all over the place. This is a new piece of um, thread or bedspread weight cotton. And I'm securing that loop over that first string. And now it's going to be up and down, up and down. Now you want to do it diagonal. So you're going to be one thread ahead on one side, one thread behind on the other side. If you do the same side, it's not going to be as strong. So you want to do slightly diagonal. And if you want to apply some glue on the very top to make sure that the center stays and the threads are in place, you can do that too. So just move along, move along. This is a great time to put something on the radio to listen to. Okay, now as we get to the other end, we've covered up everything we can. I just feed it right through that center. And then um, you can do another securing. I wanted to try and cover that, uh, but I couldn't with that leather. So anyways, I just went ahead and trimmed it. Okay, slowing it down a little bit. There's your cinch. It's actually done. You can use it as a regular cinch. You don't have to go any further. But I want you to see that we're going to need to set up a jump ring, a hook, and then the center D on this cinch. The hook is half the length of the finished cinch minus the ring, the jump ring. Okay. Um, now what we're going to do is take a rubber band and we're going to take both the cinches, uh, the rings, and we're going to rubber band them. And this will be our first connection to the loom. And this is very slow. <laughs> um, I just want you to see that. Okay, so those are the two centerings. Attach that to our loom. And then on the other side, this is the center jump ring on the cinch. And then we have a jump ring that will be one of the um, rings for the final, final cinch. And these are actually a little bit smaller for the back. I don't know why, I just did pick smaller ones. Okay, so we're gonna put this on the jump ring and we can get that pin, that's that uh, tongue right there in the rubber band, just like we did the other one. Put that on the nail, pull it tight, get our hook on. It's important if the hook is the same on both sides, see how it's twisted, that's not good. We gotta fix that. So I'm um, changing where the rubber band is to get the twist out. Okay, we're not gonna need as much. I mean, I used about four to six feet on the other um i think i had i didn't have enough left over to do these so i would say three feet and we're going to do exactly what we did before only it's going to be half the length so it's it's a lot to go tie so we counted the strands as at 11 i believe 10 or 11 so we do half like we did on the other so it's just a short latigo and uh or a short cinch and you use the same for like breast collars um do three and this would be a breast collar right same same type of thing well they would use a jump ring in the middle instead of a d all right feeding it through this is kind of getting a little long and boring so we're just going to jump to where we do the finish knots um anywhere from one to three I would do three wherever you're going to glue your uh, leather for the keepers. And um, then I would do, you know, at, at least one um, on the center. Okay, trigger the camera. I flipped it around. This is finishing um, 
for this side of the cinch, we need to do exactly the same thing one more time in that center D ring in order to complete the cinch. So I'm taking this apart and setting up uh, just like I did before, making sure that we got the rubber band in the right place, tongue under the loop, and then we're going to put that on there, the loom, and then hook, and then in the center. Now you can go ahead and uh, leave it free like I did there, or you can go ahead and redo the other side and put all three of the cinch rings in that rubber band to keep them out of the way. Through the magic of video, we are now done with the second side. Go ahead and take that off. My rubber band broke. I had to get a thicker, another rubber band. All right, so a little bit of twisting on this, but we're going to lay it out there. And now I'm going to take some 3 32nd inch lace that I've scived, and I'm going to go ahead and glue that onto the, what I determine is the wrong side. So usually you have a pretty side and a not so pretty side. Um, I have one of these cinches in my office that I look at, and there's a pretty side and a not so pretty side. So we're going to go ahead and just glue only to the back and halfway, halfway. So that's giving me my keepers on the right side, doing that on all four. And there you go. That is your cinch for the pack saddle web girth. Instead of using elastic, you make one of these. Thank you for spending time with me today. Like, subscribe, tell all your friends about the channel, and have yourself a really good day.